if you're not comfortable making sure that you can safely secure a solar panel to the roof of your vehicle, I would recommend that you have a professional installer do it. Today I'm going to be installing the Bouge RV 180 watt solar panel on top of my minivan camper. For this install, I do want to try to make this as simple as possible. So I have opted to go for an OEM style roof rack crossbar. This roof rack crossbar will work with all Toyota Siennas that have this rail on top. Along with the OEM roof rack crossbars, I'm gonna use these simple solar panel mounting brackets that you can get off of Amazon for approximately $10 for a set. Before I go any further, I wanna measure the distance between this hole and this hole, and then make sure that I have at least enough clearance on top of the minivan to fit my brackets when I have them installed. I've got about 29 inches there. On my roof, I have about 40 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my brackets. One kit here has four feet in it, and then it has all the nuts and bolts you would need. So I'm gonna be using these nuts and bolts. They have a locking washer for one side and a standard washer for the other side. When I'm done, I'm gonna have one of these on each of the four corners of the solar panel. And what I'm gonna do is slide the roof rack crossbar in there and then I'll secure this with a couple of zip ties. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bolt with a standard washer and I'm actually gonna put it in the solar panel facing out. And the reason is when I have this fully mounted, I will be able to look and see if those nuts have begun to ease off and then I can either tighten them down or possibly add a little bit of Loctite to make sure they don't move. I'm just gonna rest the bracket like that. The next thing I'm gonna do is make sure I have that lock washer put in place and then I'll simply bolt on this nut. So there it is installed. Once I get it tightened down, I will move on and put on all three of these brackets. Although something like this is a little bit of overkill, it is kind of cold out here. So to save my fingers, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. And there it is. I'm gonna put it on two and just give it, give it a little twist. There we go. Pretty solid. So now I'm gonna repeat that process with the other three feet. And once I get that done, I will just simply put those roof rack crossbars on and put them in place. Now that I have those four brackets installed, what I'm gonna do is just use these tools and make sure that they're all individually tight, nice and locked in. And I'll just give it a little bit of a turn. Let me keep this bracket. Good, so that's nice and tight. Okay, so the next step is I'm just gonna put these roof rack crossbars right into these channels. Now I do want you to see they could slide right out, but what I do to kind of keep them in place is I put some zip ties around these points right here. The zip ties are rated at 75 pounds a piece, one in each corner, and then I've also moved these feet out of the way so that as I go to put the solar panel on the roof, it doesn't get stuck in the roof rack and I can just lay it down and then secure those as they need to be. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to put it in place. I would definitely recommend doing this with another person. I'm just gonna gently ease this onto my roof and slide it forward. All right, so I got the front feet kind of in place, but I wanna try to get this as far forward as I can so that when I open my trunk, my trunk doesn't hit the solar panel. I'm actually pretty happy with this location right here. So what I'm gonna do is just move these feet where I want them. I'm gonna go check them all, try to make sure they're even, and then I'll tighten them down. Now you're probably watching and you're thinking to yourself, well, someone could easily steal the solar panel off of your roof. And the answer is, yes, they probably could if they wanted to, but in a few years of doing this, I've never had that issue. And so I just hope it's not gonna happen. In addition to that, you know, if somebody did decide to steal my solar panel, uh, they have to be, you know, strong enough to remove it. Like not just unbolt it, but actually get it off the roof 
I'm not sure what the black market value of a solar panel is, if anything. Maybe if somebody stole it, they would be using it for their own build or something. So I'm locked in here pretty good. I am not satisfied with the security of those brackets. So I'm gonna actually pull it off for now and go to Lowe's and get some wire and wire it down so that I can ensure absolutely that the panel doesn't fly off when I'm going down the road. So I thought my local hardware store was a Lowe's, but it turns out that it's a Home Depot. And I'm gonna go in and see if I can get some wire and maybe some bigger washers to hold those brackets onto the panel. So I'm in the middle of this install and it just started snowing everywhere. So pretty crazy. I picked up this bailing wire. This wire is very strong. And then I also picked up some washers. These washers are a little more robust than the ones that came with the kit. I just wanna make sure that this nut and bolt doesn't slide out while I'm going down the road. So I can feel with the washers in place that the mounting bracket is much more robust. I'm glad I picked up these washers. It's going to give me a little more peace of mind. So I picked up a set of Lineman's wire pliers and these are going to be great for cutting the wire and twisting the wire at the end. I'm going to put three wraps around each side. So I need enough cable to get at least three wraps. Very easy cut. But I'm just going to twist this as much as I need to twist it. And it doesn't have to be super tight. I'm going to take this excess piece right here. And for me, because I don't plan to be messing with this anymore, just cut those off and then I'm just going to bang this out of the way. So because I do have these screws, I could, I think I'll put one in just to demonstrate how they could be mounted with this. Um, I don't need them necessarily and I also don't have an impacting socket but this socket will do because I'm only using it to cut the hole into the bracket. Okay so like that that's not going anywhere. I did have to put a little hole in the metal here, but I don't suspect that it's going to be a big issue. And if you want to see, the screw did go all the way through the crossbar. So it's definitely in there. I think if I tighten it anymore, I might even have to worry about something like sandwiching the bar and bending it. And I don't want to do that. I definitely don't want this on my bed. So I'm just going to sweep this down for now and I'll make sure to tap that out when I get the panel out of the vehicle. Okay, so, so far it's been quite an adventure. I have my bars hooked up as I want them. Safety is my number one priority and I think I have that squared away now. What I wanna do is go somewhere a little more secluded, mount the panel to the roof and hopefully it'll stop snowing so I can show you guys how this panel works in the sun. So I've got the last foot going on and I think I'm pretty satisfied with how this has been installed so far. Unfortunately, as you can see, I do have snow all around me, so I don't believe I'll be able to give you a good test of its output, but I'm pretty satisfied with how we're set up. And now I'm just gonna run the cable into the vehicle. I usually just snake the cable right through here. The seal is good enough to keep moisture from coming in. So I use that seal 
and I'm not too worried about it. So I'm satisfied with this install. And one thing I would say is if you're not comfortable making sure that you can safely secure a solar panel to the roof of your vehicle, I would recommend that you have a professional installer do it. You don't want that panel to go flying down the road at 70 miles an hour and potentially hitting another vehicle. Now I'm just gonna do a test drive. I'm gonna use the GoPro. The GoPro is sliding around a little bit, so I may not leave it on there very long, but I just wanna see if I can see any vibration in the panel that, I, that concerns me. I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with that, but I just wanna make absolutely sure before I take off and go on the rest of my adventure. The cable is hanging there, and that is not the last place I am going to put it. I'm going to route it around the bottom of the bed here, and I have this wire, this 20-foot cable that is provided by Bouge RV to attach to the solar panel, and then when I figure out where I'm going to put it, it came with some ends that I will be able to use to set it exactly where I want it. Once I figure out how long I want the cables to be exactly, I will trim them using this Bouge RV trim kit. I have seen this around. I actually do have one of these somewhere else that I had used in the past and they come with plenty of connectors. And what happens is you get this nice tool, you get these MC4 connector, disconnector, screwdriver type of thing. I could buy a bunch of MC4 connectors separately, but just getting those pliers right there and those two MC4 tools saves a lot of hassle with making these cable end connectors. If you don't have a tool like that and you're making your cable ends, you're gonna try to use a regular set of pliers. You'll probably smash it. They don't go together well. Thanks for watching my install video. Check out this video here and I'll see you on my next adventure.